We'll move on to Henry now, who um, works with Campaign Against the Arms Trade, and he's going to be able to give us a regional kind of explanation of why it's a very bad idea to send in arms. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, um, I'm going to talk about why at Campaign Against Arms Trade, CAT, we think we shouldn't send more arms to Syria, um, but also more broadly about why when Britain has exported arms, in the past, it's been a bad idea. Um, some of you this week might have seen that an arms trade treaty was passed at the United Nations, and obviously lots of people are pleased about that because the idea that regulating uh, weapon sales seems like a good thing. But unfortunately, uh, the reality is still that Britain is promoting arms sales. And Britain has much stronger arms controls on paper than this arms trade treaty. And it's still in the top five arms exporters in countries in the world. So this is the Twitter feed. I'm not sure how many of you use Twitter, but this is the uh, ambassador, the British ambassador in Libya. So on Tuesday, when the arms trade treaty went through, he said, fantastic news, we've got a new arms trade treaty. And then, uh, less than 24 hours later, he said he was absolutely delighted to welcome a British naval ship to Libya, uh, on which they were going to have a floating arms fair uh, to sell arms to the new Libyan regime. Um, and this is him getting excited about having a party on the ship before the arms fair opened. And you can obviously see the irony in that situation, that the arms trade treaty is slightly meaningless if a country like Britain that supposedly supported it was promoting arms to a country uh, which has got a new government. We don't really know what the new Liby Libyan government, similarly to what might come out of Syria in a few years' time if, it's, if uh, Assad goes uh, in Libya. We don't really know the direction of the government, yet Britain has it as a priority market, one of its top 16 countries it really wants to arm. Um, so this is the ship docked up in the harbour, um, and there's a, a couple of other reasons it's a bad idea to be arming Libya. Obviously the mistake of arming the previous regime, we armed Colonel Gaddafi right up until the uh, uprising there, and then we bombed the arms we'd sold to them uh, the previous month. Um, and also the arms from Libya now that the conflict has uh, reduced, are spreading out to other countries and they partly feel the uh, conflict in Maui at last month, which is still ongoing. Um, and the reason for that is because the attitude of the British government hasn't really changed. They talk about an arms trade treaty. If any of you have ever written to your MP, you'll get a nice letter back saying how, don't worry, Britain's got the strongest arms export controls in the world and we support an arms trade treaty. But this is more close to their actual view, this is the Defence Minister, um, Gerald Harris. He's thankfully not in post anymore, but the, this, this view is still fairly representative. He says, we liberated the Iraqis from a tyrant, we liberated Libya from a tyrant. Frankly, I want to see UK business benefit from the liber liberation we've given to their people. Um, and if that's the sort of thing that's coming out of the government ministers, uh, mouth, you know things like the Arms Trade Treaty are going to be slightly limited in their impact. Um, I thought it was worth making a point because not everyone is always aware that most arms sales, 95% of arms sales, are legal. Um, so they're not uh, illegal um, arms dealers working privately. They're government-backed sales from one government, um, the British government, for instance, working with BAE systems to sell arms to Saudi Arabia or Bahrain or the United Arab Emirates. And this is uh, David Cameron and Vince Cable uh, happily selling arms to India. Um, I thought it was also worth a quick uh, reminder of some of Britain's historical arms sales, uh, particularly the ones we've then gone on to have a war with shortly after we've armed them. So it was Argentina just before the Falklands War, shot them um, a ship and helicopters. Uh, we armed uh, both. Iran and Iraq, uh, and then went on to have a, a war with uh, Saddam Hussein's Iraq, the first Gulf War. Uh, we'd done just 
uh, right up until that. Uh, in Libya, in 2008, the government secured a £5 million uh, contract for communication systems in tanks in Libya. And in 2011, when we decided Gaddafi was bad, having the previous month thought he was good, uh, we bombed those tanks. So it's just worth remembering some of these things when we think about when we're sending arms to Syria, what might happen eventually. So, moving specifically on to Syria, uh, I'm just going to talk about um, what the UK government has been doing in relation to its view that we should arm the rebels in Syria. Um, so, the Foreign Secretary, William Hague, has been pressing the European Union to change its arms embargo on Syria um, so that military equipment can go to the opposition forces. He was pushing, the British government was pushing hard for that, but on the 18th of February, the EU basically said no to Britain and said we should maintain the arms embargo. Um, but on the 6th of March, Haig confirmed that um, the UK could train opposition forces and supply non-lethal military equipment such as armoured vehicles. So they're chipping away at this arms embargo by uh, sending things like armoured vehicles. Um, and on the 12th of March, David Cameron went further and told MPs that actually, if the EU didn't lift the embargo, then Britain would send arms anyway. Uh, so, campaign against arms trade, we oppose any relaxation of the arms embargo, and I'll just run through some of the reasons. Um, we think that a military focused response undermine efforts that we talked about to negotiate a solution and protect civilians. Uh, we think arming opposition groups will have unforeseen long term consequences. Uh, some of the groups are very sectarian and we, we don't know what's going to come out of this situation and giving them lots of arms without knowing what's going to happen is unlikely to be good in the long term. And the third point is that there's already a lot of weapons there and any further weaponry will probably just make the conflict uh, much worse and reduce the chances of peace. So what should the government do? So we're saying six things that the government should do. So it should reinstate the arms embargo on all sides in the conflict in Syria. Ensure that no weaponry supplied to third countries Saudi, uh, such as Saudi Arabia is sent on to any faction within Syria. So Saudi Arabia is Britain's biggest customer, and Britain is the biggest supplier of arms to Saudi Arabia, and Saudi Arabia is sending arms to Syria. There isn't clearer evidence yet that weapons have gone from Britain to Saudi Arabia to Syria but it seems possible that that might happen or have happened. Um, we should put pressure on uh, countries giving military support to Assad, uh, like Saudi Arabia, like Russia, uh, to stop, uh, sorry, to, to Assad, to anti-Assad militias, uh, so like Saudi Arabia, to, uh, to stop doing that. Uh, put pressure on Russia and other supply countries to stop uh, supplying weapons to the Syrian government. And, we're saying end the UK government relationship with Rosa Bora and Export. So that's the Russian Arms Promotion Agency. 80% of Russian arms exports come through this agency. Um, and the UK government actually works with them um, in terms of uh, giving them um, stalls at uh, arms exhibitions and arms fairs. Um, so they, that's a simple step that they could do is stop, stop working with then um, unless they stop uh, supplying arms to the Assad side. Um, give all possible support to a negotiated solution to the conflict and pledge to greater resources for humanitarian assistance to refugees and displaced people. Um, one thing that means that we might be able to persuade the government to do this is that the British public really does oppose sending arms to Syria. They remember situations before like Iraq uh, and Libya. Um, so this is the YouGov poll on the 21st of March, so about two weeks ago. Uh, would you support or oppose each of the following? So sending food, medicine and humanitarian supplies, 
three quarters support, only a very small number of hosts. Sending air protective clothing such as flak jackets and helmets to the troops fighting through, through the Assad regime. It's a bit unclear. 48% people will some oppose. But when we get onto the arms, it's very clear that the majority oppose it. So sending defensive military supplies such as anti aircraft guns to the anti Assad troops. Only 23% support it, 50% oppose it. And sending small arms such as handguns to the anti-Assad troops. That drops even further, so only 18% of the British public support it, 54% oppose it. And when you get down to sending the British or French troops, because the survey was also done in France, uh, it's right down to 75% of the public oppose it. So it's very clear that the public uh, oppose it. And, and when you look uh, further at that, I don't know, uh, how interested in uh, this you'll be, but I find it interesting in terms of. Sorry, I know you can't see that, but I'm going to. Uh, I can always give anyone the link at the end to see it, but um, this breaks those numbers down by which political party most people vote for, what age they are, and that sort of thing. So you can see well, who does oppose arms exports and who supports them. And actually, every single group, the majority opposes sending arms. But what you might find surprising is the group of voters that is most opposed to sending arms is UKIP voters, then Conservatives, then Liberal Democrats, then Labour, but a majority of all of those groups um, oppose arming uh, Syria. Um, so, again, something positive, what can we do? Well, for those of you that haven't read to William Hague, just go to our website homepage, www.cat.org.uk. You can take on a leaflet at the back uh, to demand no arms to Syria. And we've got a letter, uh, an email. You can just fill in your details and send it off. And actually, we've noticed that a large number of the emails that have already been sent have been from Leicester because of Penny's great campaign. Uh, and all of you who've uh, been on the floor. So well done on that. Um, you can also sign up for CAP uh, updates uh, if you're concerned about arms sales generally, not just to Syria, but to other countries like Bahrain, which also has an uprising, and Britain is still selling to arms to uh, that being used to put them down. Um, but we were talking before about the other things people could do um, on this if you want to take action. It's a good idea to write to your MP. Uh, although the government is and uh, supporting sending on or trying to push for arms to be sent to uh, the Syrian opposition. Uh, this is one example of uh, where the Labour Party do actually have a different position and at the moment they're not supporting sending arms to the opposition. So it'd be good if you write whether you've got um, a Labour MP here in Leicester or if you live outside whoever your MP is, write to them and, and just point out that the more you can point out all the reasons it's wrong and it's also worth pointing out that the vast majority of the public are against it as well. Um, you could write to your local paper. Uh, the journalist from the Lesser Mercury is gone now, so he doesn't know I suggested that. Um, and uh, you can help Penny uh, with stalls in Leicester in terms of getting people um, to, uh, more aware of this situation and to um, write to William Hague or to their MP uh, to push. Uh, to stop the uh, uh, government pushing for more arms sales uh, to Syria.